Hello everyone and welcome back to coverage of Grand Prix Atanis for the Revolution format. I'm Caillou and today we're going to be watching the round 3 match between Dork in Distress and Herzy Quirzy. Dork in Distress is running out Big Red, which as you can see from these red-white lands is actually more of Big Red Splash White for cards like Amaret, which are powerful finishers in their own right, and also Cybrus Clan Arbiter and some sideboard material. But generally the main plan is similar to that of Big Red. Um, Use cheap burn-based interaction uh, to clear out uh, early uh, threats from aggro decks, and then in the late game, convert those into going face. So as we see here, top deck, uh, one of the few white cards in deck, the Cybers Clan Arbiter. This is likely, I, I don't think it's uh, uh, too much of a stretch to call this the best card in the format right now. Very flexible, really good against both creature and non-creature based decks, and can create some nasty non-games. So... It looks like I'm surprised Hersey didn't cast the Secrets of the Sand in response to prevent it from being taxed out. Um, I guess uh, on the assumption that Dork would name Onslaught of Winter, perhaps? Um, but yeah, looking at Hersey's hand here, uh, you can see that they're running out Esper Control. Um, Hersey is a prolific control player, um, and as a result... Uh, also has like kind of a unique approach to building control decks. Like I don't think uh, any of the control decks we've seen so far have run Viper Ambush or like Secrets of the Sands, um, or not maybe not Secrets, but like mostly like Viper Ambush and some other cards, which are kind of Hersey specials here. So on end, Hersey played the Endless Paper Trail after Dork named Onslaught of Winter with the Cybers Clan. He's gonna swing in with Endless Paper Trail, make a clue. Um, and I think double Endless Paper Trail is a pretty scary uh, clock. Uh, Dork can untap uh, Sandscald uh, to kill uh, this Endless Paper Trail. Uh, can also, hmm, can, another thing they can do is they, can, they could drop Amaret and then minus three. I think that that's also a very valid play. And then you have Cybers Clan Arbiter, if they, even if they drop Viper Ambush on end and then try to like swing in to kill Amaret, you can just chump with the Cybers Clan Arbiter. Oh no, Dork attacking with Cybers Clan Arbiter. This is this feels like kind of a bad move when you know that uh, Hersey has the Viper Ambush. Maybe, oh, I guess one thing this could be is baiting the Viper Ambush and then going to Ferocious Flame the token before blocks. Because Dork does have mana for both Ferocious Flame and Sand Scald here. That does mean that they're uh, putting themselves off of playing either Merciless Shieldbreaker or Amaret here. Okay, in response is going to run out the other Endless Paper Trail. That's also an option. Can block with that. Um, Dork, and Dork can't kill this at instant speed. Sand Scald is a sorcery. Um, oh no, is going to Ferocious Flame. The Endless Paper Trail, uh, it looks like, is that... Oh, okay, that's in response to block. So Ferocious Flame plus the Arbiter trades for the Endless Paper Trail. But now uh, Hersey has access to Onslaught of Winter castable. But this also, now that Hersey's tapped out, doesn't have to worry about counter magic, so it can Sand Scald to kill the uh, Endless Paper Trail. Um, now Hersey is out of wind cons. Viper Ambush doesn't really count. They can Secrets of the Sands for one, though, and also have the clue. So, I don't know how much I hate just tapping out for Secrets of the Sands here. And then you can uh, untap Luxury Dr District to have uh, two mana up uh, for... Uh, in to be able to crack the clue, but Hurley decides to crack the clue on their turn. Uh, now has, I guess you can do it the other way around as well. So now has four mana up for Secrets of the Sands. Still drawing a lot of lands here. Meanwhile, Dork is going nothing but, ga nothing but gas. Gonna drop the Merciless Shield Breaker, and this is gonna be, yeah, merciless play. Because Hersey doesn't have any other permanents and doesn't have a counterspell, this is just gonna eat up uh, a land. But Hersey can on end Secrets of the Sands and then return a land to their hand uh, to get the Rust counter off of it. So essentially what this does is uh, upon a, when it en enters or attacks, uh, an opponent puts a counter, uh, two counters on a permanent they control, remove one in their upkeep, and then once both are removed, they sacrifice a permanent and take four damage. It's very backbreaking if your opponent doesn't have a good response to it. Oh, so it looks like in response instead, Hersey's going to... Uh, in response to the ETB, use Viper Ambush to make a token, and then uh, put both of those on the token. Interesting. I would have thought that you could Secrets of the Sand the Sands there and then save the snake if they decide to attack in with the Shield Breaker, but I guess the idea here is to act as a rattlesnake. But yeah, now Hersey doesn't really have a... Oh, 
I was about to say Hersey doesn't have a way to answer the Merciless Shieldbreaker, but top next one right there. The Suffer Vile Retribution coming in. Hersey's going to swing in with the a Snake here. Dork thinking about whether he should trade. Nope, it's just going to take one. Main two, yeah, if you're Hersey, you have to run at the Suffer Vile Retribution here. It just is not worth it. And then you can still keep up four mana for Secrets of the Sands. Okay, and he's going to tap a uh, Luxury District plus Daguri Veil vale Boundary for Suffer. The reason this is possible is because Hersey has an Ice Path naming Black. Uh, Ice Path is actually a surprisingly good way to, for controlling or slower decks to be able to run utility lands like this Luxury District while still also getting good mana fixing in the process. Okay, Dork's first non-gas draw in a while will, will top deck a land, but still has double Solara, Omrit, and Burning Dawn, which I think it's going to be a real uphill battle for uh, Dork, for uh, Hersey to answer. Is going to run out the Solara. Okay, just going to plus up a Solara, discard the Burning Dawn, makes sense, you can just uh, leave it in Graveyard. Draws into another land. Um, on end, Hersey's probably going to play Secrets of Sands and bounce their Snake Token before it can uh, rust and, and deal 4 damage to themselves. Yep, Secrets of the Sands coming out. Draws a second Onslaught and a Thin the Veil. Hmm, I'm not sure what Hersey has in deck specifically that, that can answer the Solara. Um... And yeah, it is going to bounce the, secret, uh, the snake token with Secrets of Sands. But um, even if Hersey doesn't have a good Thin the Veil target uh, uh, for to be able to kill Solara, can just ki can kind of just like run out Onslaught of Winter here as a expensive kill spell now that they have the second copy. And a little too late gets the Sentinel's Denial. Would have been great last turn. They do have Suffer, suffer Vile Retributions in Graveyard. Um... Which, if they just play it, it does force um, Dork to, like, minus uh, Solara down to, like, minus uh, 5 Solara to not have Solara just start getting pressured by the Suffer. Um, but yeah, I think that you probably... I think it, the answer here is probably Thin the Veil for something, but I'm not sure what. I'll have to check up Hersey's deck list here real quick. Oh no, is going to do the aggressive Onslaught play. Is just going to Onslaught of Winter take out the Solara... Okay, and with this also, be oh, and the reason I think Hersey does this is they answer Solara, but additionally, uh, because of Luxury District, they also now have Sentinel's Denial up. So if Dork tries to run out Solara number two or Amrit, um, Sentinel's Denial will allow Hersey to counter it. Solara number two, Windmill Slam? No, Dork think, okay, Dork gonna run out Amrit, but even despite being cheaper, it's not gonna be easier to answer. And they also kind of showed their hand there, saying, hey, I have a five mana card in hand. Okay, so next turn, Dor can either play Ozai, but will probably play, um, or will play Solara, the Ozai altar. Um, but will probably just play the land Burning Dawn invoke because it can't be countered. Um, it, it will just be able to be uh, uh, killed by a Cola Suffer Val Retribution, though. So Hersey... Like I said, like fighting through these planeswalkers is an uphill battle, but Hersey's, but now it's Hersey who's the one who's drawing gas and is just going for it. And also now that, oh my god, now that Hersey has six types in Grave, can bring out um, Jora. And I actually, I wonder if uh, Hersey should have let uh, Amaret resolve uh, last turn so that they could minus three Jora and exile the Burning Dawn. Because now Jora can't minus three to exile uh, Grave. But Hersey, oh my god, and just more gas, pluses the Jora to get a Gassy Spirit. And yeah, Thin the Veil, I feel like you rarely see it cracked for uh, six types here. But Tribal, Sorcery, Land, Instant, Enchantment, Creature. The Hersey's deck is made, to, t is made uh, to take maximum value out of Thin the Veil. It's like if you've ever played Seasons Past Control, very much in the vein of Dark Petition, except so much better in the right circumstances. And also has the top deck Sentinel's Denial still up. So uh, if... Uh, I think Dork can play a land here and then resolve Omret through a Sentinel's Denial. But I don't know what the Omret will do because then Hersey just untaps minus threes and then kills. Yeah, Dork just going to concede there. They don't really have a good answer to a, resol to a resolved Jora. And again, that was... I think that was like... It's weird because I don't know that Dork did anything particularly like wrong, wrong there, but it's just that like they had so many difficult to answer threats, but Hersey got the like had kept their cool, got the answers in the nick of time, and I think made some 
like the like the onslaught of winter just to kill a solara play was um i think in the in hindsight the the correct move right there just taking the threat off the board and uh since they had another wipe in hand it wasn't really an option loss in the long run but yeah um Dork can certainly bring this back uh, in games two and three. They have an explosive enough start and uh, value engines that Hersey has to answer at all costs. Okay, getting into game two. Dork has already mulled once, is going to keep six, uh, is a, has a little bit of a slow start, doesn't have any plays until turn three with Burning Dawn or Climb to the Peak, but a Climb to the Peak is overwhelming card advantage. And if they can resolve the Merciless Shieldbreaker versus Hersey, that's probably GG. On Hersey's end is keeping a two lander, but has negate um, uh, f- uh, the dark bargains for card advantage, memory hostage. I'm interested in the memory hostage to bring in. Maybe it's just there to take out like Solaras or something. But I feel like Dork has enough varied threats that memory hostage is not actually that great. I'm also surprised by the transcendent effigy bring in. Um, I guess the life gain is nice, but it feels kind of unimpactful in a matchup that's all about trading resources. Um, like this one, because I feel like this this is very much a matchup of Dork plays a game winning bomb and Hersey has to have the, have the answer for it, and Effigy just doesn't quite fit into that plan in my opinion. So Hersey gonna be opening up with the tap Triland though. So next turn can untap, have negate up, uh, have Nivea's regret up, and also if they want to uh, dark bargain instead if they're really worried. But I think you can just um. If you're worried about not hitting... Okay, looks like they are going to play the Dark Bargain. I, want, I think that is valid if you're worried about not hitting your third land drop. Um, it draws a Suffer Valor Retribution set. Has lots of gas, but doesn't have the land they need. So then it's going to play Island, Transcendent Effigy, Mana Efficiency, and then pass. Dork will get to now resolve uh, the Climb to the Peak, though. And that is going to be, uh, pardon the pun, a hill to climb for Hersey. So yep, here comes a climb to the peak. Three mana draw five is pretty not bad. Okay, so getting the full host gets uh, two lands, Sand Scald, Almeret, and uh, Solara off of it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Dork just went uh, play the mountain from hand Almeret next turn. Just keep the pressure on Hersey. Because, and now Hersey has to keep... Hersey can't uh, Dark Bargain again. They know that they have to keep up the mana for the negate here. Otherwise, they're doomed. Next turn, Hersey can untap and like play Dark Bargain plus hold up Nivea's Regret or play Memory Hostage. But I think the wild part is if Hersey names Memory Hostage on like Solara, it actually won't do anything. Like they can't get Solara out of her uh, because Dork has one under the climb to the peak. So they'd have to Memory Hostage like Amaret after Dork plays one this turn. Oh no, Dork is going to play the land. Interesting. And then go for the Merciless Shieldbreaker play. Yeah, okay. This doesn't get countered by the... Uh, uh, by the... What do you call it? Uh, negate. But Hersey on end probably just Nivea's regrets it. And then puts the counter on Dark Bargain. Which Hersey's planning to sacrifice anyways next turn. So it's n- it's actually not that bad for Hersey. I'm surprised because I feel like you want to just run... Because you only get three plays uh, off of Climb to the Peak. So I feel like you want to play your most high-impact cards, which would be like Amaret uh, and Solara off of it. And Hersey kind of getting into uh, a little bit of mana screw right here. Looks like he's going to crack the Dark Bargain. Yep, Dark Bargain cracked. Still not hitting a, a fourth land. Has this Suffer Vault Retribution instead. Is is decked out with uh, with interaction. Just doesn't have the mana to be able to run it out. Still, uh, no matter what Dork plays this turn, uh, Hersey's going to be able to cleanly counter it with the negate. But Starved Oasis is a little bit scary uh, looking at it in uh, relation to what Hersey has. Hersey does have the Descend into Darkness for it, but um, I think that uh, Dork can rely on that as a win con if Hersey u- runs out the Descend a little bit early on something else. Okay, so Dork going to try and run out Solara, but Hersey just going to stymie that with the negate. And a fourth land, finally. No, Hersey's still not hitting that fourth land. Yeah, has to run with the Dark Bargain now. This is really unfortunate. Hersey is like a quarter through their deck and has only seen three lands. And still does... Hits a Sentinel to... What is going on with Hersey's deck? Yeah, okay, has to crack the Dark Bargain again. Endless pay... 
Oh my god, this is so unfortunate from Hersey. Planes of Transcendent Effigy passes. What is going on with Hersey's deck? Hersey is almost a whole third through their deck, is like 16 cards deep, and has only seen three lands. This is really unfortunate. And again, they had kind of a good hand, but the, but I think that this might just uh, put them out of it. Are they going to play San... Oh, they're going to play Sanskald and not Amrit? Okay, Climb to the Peak cracks, but it looks like they're going to play Sanskald and not Amrit. I'm really surprised by this, if I'm going to be honest. I think that... Why would you do this? I guess it can kill... But you don't... Why do you kill care about the effigies? They can... I, I think you would much rather play Amaret, and then even if the 1-1s one are blocked by the effigies, you just hold them back, and then you wait until Amaret is... Uh, has 7 loyalty counters set there at Wincon. Yeah, I think that this is kind of... Uh, unless I'm missing something, I think this is kind of a bad play, especially because Dork already had the Sanskald in hand, so could play Amaret right now, and then next turn, do the Sanskald plus Burning Dawn play anyways. So yeah, I think that not playing the Amrit is really, really, really misusing the uh, window of opportunity that Hersey gave Dork. Because now Dork doesn't have a win con. I guess they have the Starved Oasis, but much worse than an Amrit, or much less scary for Hersey. Uh, Hersey does have the... Okay, hit, plays a Dark Bargain off the top, off the top finally hits um, a third land is going to be able to uh, descend to darkness the Starved Oasis here. Alternatively, Dork could just Burning Dawn, and then Hersey wouldn't really have an answer to that and would just have to un uh, untap next turn and then Suffer Vol Retribution it and hope to draw a land off the top so they can still have Sentinel's Denial plus uh, Descend into Darkness up. Nope, okay, it looks like he's going to run out the Starved Oasis. Um, if you're Hersey, yeah, you just... Windmill Slam the Descend into Darkness here. The second Starved Oasis from Dork is really scary, though. But the Descent will help kill the uh, Starved Oasis and then recoup some of the life lost uh, to Cracking Dark Bargains. Okay, main two can play a land and then Sand Scald face? Yeah, see, this is where it's kind of a... You just... you, you This is where op, not playing Amrit comes into play. Hersey, okay, Hersey does top deck a land. So now we're getting into the land flow. Um, probably, yeah, you just play Frigid Landscape. Does Hersey want a Memory Hostage here? I don't even think so. I think that... It's late enough that you're kind of scared of what Dork has in hand because of all the mana. Um, or no, you can, no, no, no. You can Memory Hostage to actually exile the Burning Dawn. That is actually a play. I think that's actually a reasonably fine play here. Just bur just Memory Hostage to take out the Burning Dawn from a Grave. Especially since uh, Hersey doesn't have an answer to Starved Oasis yet. You could also just keep up mana, Endless Paper Trail, trade with Starved Oasis. Ooh, okay, Hersey's going to crack uh, the Dark Bargain. I think that doing this was actually a mistake. And the reason is that Ice Path gives all of your lands the ability to to tap for um, color, like all of your colors mana to be able to crack, to be cracked for black. So it should have tapped Luxury District, have it untap, and then would have still had mana up for Endless Paper Trail. Now Hersey can't play Endless Paper Trail if that's something that they end up wanting to do. Especially since Endless Paper Trail is their... Like, if Dork doesn't play the Burning Dawn, their, that's their answer, is the Endless Paper Trail. Also, they can't counter the Invoke, so I don't... Actually, yeah, Hersey just doesn't have a play here. So I, I don't know how I feel about that. Hersey just kind of gave up tempo for no reason. So it's going to take four from the uh, Burning Dawn being invoked here, thanks to Sunscale Totem. And yeah, because of tapping uh, Ice Path instead of Luxury District... Uh, Hersey just had to pass without doing anything. So Hersey could keep mana up and then endless paper. Okay, I was about to say, yeah. So you probably just suffer Vol Retribution here, and then you can keep up mana for Sentinel Denial or Endless Paper Trail here. So suffer coming down. And then you can trade an and then I think you're completely fine trading an endless paper trail for the starved oasis. Because then um at that point you have uh you have suffer vol retribution as soon as you hit another land. So Cybers Clan Arbiter coming out, presumably uh, is going to tax up the Suffer Vault Retributions, just in case. Could also tax Fall of it. I think, yeah, I think probably the best thing to tax would just be the Suffer Vault Retribution, given Dork's current situation. You don't want Hersey to be able to untap next turn and then off of a top deck land coalesce the Suffer Vault Retribution in Graveyard. That would just not do. So, yeah, I think if you are Dork, how do you get, how do you, how do you like look at that hand and be like, yeah, okay, I can stabilize this game. It's it's not a done deal, but it is 
close enough. And he's still going to start, I guess, has to start Oasis at some point. But he's still going to start Oasis knowing that Hersey has the endless paper trail. I guess just forcing them to trade it here at this point. Is Hersey not going to? I mean, I guess Hersey could keep... Yeah, Hersey is going to, okay. I guess my thought is Hersey could say, okay, I want it as a win con, but like, yeah, I don't really think that you want it as, as much of a win con when you already have the Suffer Ball retributions. So yeah, he's just going to trade with the Starved Oasis. And yeah, now, and, and again, taking this, taking the Sand Scald over Armoret, it keeps coming back because now Dork doesn't have a win con other than the Cybrus, which Hersey can just untap and then uh, Suffer Ball retribution on. Okay, Thin the Veil is actually an interesting top deck. Has one, two, three, four, five is just shy of having enough types for Jora, So he's going to suffer Vault Retribution to kill the Cybrus. Does Hersey have any way of putting another type into their graveyard? Not really. Oh my god, and what a top deck for Dork. It gets the climb to the peak and uh, has the four mana to be able... Oh no, it's going to Sand Scald. Hersey's just going to Sentinel's Denial uh, to... And is not going to pay the four. Uh, so Dork's not going to pay the four, I guess just now, so that now they can resolve the climb to the peak. Oh lord, and now I, th- now I think if you're Hersey, you p- probably have to quote-unquote waste the Thin the Veil on an answer for Climb to the Peak. Does Hersey have non-land permanent removal? They probably, hopefully they do, otherwise this double Solara is, is probably going to be a beating. Okay, Thin the Veil? Okay, oh my god, hold on. So, okay, so wait, actually, Thin the Veiled for a Jora, and I just realized that the reason that Hersey cast the aggressive, uh, Sentinel's Denial there was, um, oh my god, okay, so I, they, so much was missed in between me just going to check a deck list there, but what happened was, um, Sentinel's Denial actually put the last type Hersey needed into Graveyard, um, put, um, Hersey up to six, so then could, uh, untap, thin the veil, get Jora, Jora minus threes and destroys, uh, climb to the peak, and after that, Dork is left with one card in hand and nothing else, while Hersey has two, um, Hersey has a Jora on board, Counterspell, a Wipe, and a Memory Hostage in hand, and then two Suffer Vile Retributions in Grave, which also become Clocks. So that was, and yeah, and, and because of Jora's life gain, there was no way to just kind of like keep top decking burn spells and kill Hersey that way. So, whew. Yeah, that, those were some, I think those were games where it was like, Hersey had to fight uphill battles, but Dork made like one or two mistakes and was just a little bit too slow. And because they were like, and because their plan was to go over the top, um, they couldn't really compete when Hersey's went even more over the top in terms of greed and just having answers. But yeah, whew. these matches for Grand Prix of Tennis have been exciting so far. I think this puts Hersey either up to, I believe it puts them to 2-1. So they're still live for... Um, Top cut, let's check. Oh no, that was actually the 2-0 bracket, so Hersey is at 3-0. So, only has to win one more match to make the top cut for this GP. Meanwhile, Dork is now at 2-1, still in the running. As long as they win their next two matches, they'll also make the top cut. So, until next time, when we keep covering Grand Prix Athanas, this is Caillou, signing off.